Russia's economy is tanking, pun intended. Are the sanctions starting to bite? My latest column in Brussels Morning served to you via my indelible personality, <laughs> whatever that means. A mere four months into 2023, and Russia's entire forecast annual budget deficit is used up. Thus considered the beleaguered Ministry of Finance of Russia in on May 10th. The target of 2% of gross domestic product in terms of shortfall looks like a pipe dream. Federal, federal revenues shrank by a whopping 22% compared to the same period in 2022. The government's intake amounted to slightly less than 12 billion US dollars per month, according to Moscow Times. Compared to the same time frame last year, the energy, oil and gas sector endured a devastating plunge of 52% in its revenues during these months to less than a total of 30 billion USD. The meager 5.5% increase in income from the other non-energy sectors of the economy, a paltry 72 billion US dollars, this meager increase could not offset the precipitous drop in income from the oil and gas sector. In the meantime, Moscow spent a mind-numbing 145 billion US dollars in the first four months of this year. The ineluctable result, a budget deficit of 45 billion US dollars, one of the largest ever in the history of this country. Russians would be surprised to learn that the economy is in trouble. Military manufacturing and explosive state spending camouflage the true dismal state of affairs. Nor did inflation rear its ugly head yet. But the central bank's ability to cut rates will now be severely hampered, confronted as it is by this fiscal hemorrhaging. The situation is bound to get much worse if energy prices remain depressed. The government's attempts to rein in spending are laughable in the face of the military debacle in Ukraine. Sanctions are beginning to bite as well. Consider the agricultural sector. Russian Agricultural Bank, Ros Roskolkhozbank, was booted from the SWIFT system. There is a ban on exports of agricultural machinery and spares to Russia. The insurance of Russian ships and cargo is restricted as is access to many ports. The pipeline pumping ammonia from the Russian city of Togliati to the Ukrainian port of Odessa is turned off and the accounts of Russian fertilizer companies are frozen. So the two pillars of Russia's defiant response to Western sanctions are crumbling. Surging public spending is no longer tenable and spiking oil revenues are no longer spiking. When the United States and the European Union imposed a price cap of 60 US dollars per barrel of Russian oil, Putin laughed it off. He is laughing no more. It proved to be a surprisingly efficacious measure in cutting into Russia's proceeds. Calling a halt to the war in Ukraine might actually make matters worse as military industrial production winds down and soldiers are demobilized and rejoin the civilian workforce. What's left of it at any rate? <laughs> the only way out of this conundrum is a sharp rise in the prices of energy products in Eurasia's markets. But fears of a global recession, struggling sectors of the economy in China, real estate, and in the West, banking, as well as a still stubborn inflation, all these portend ill as far as this scenario is concerned. Ironically, the aforementioned price cap, coupled with OPEC Plus, including Russian production cuts, 
may deliver this salvation by the end of this year, but it's a big if. The adversaries of the Russian kleptocracy should not celebrate yet, though. Putin's incentive to hang on to power via repression at home and military aggression abroad would be only buttressed as he is cornered into a nosediving, solipsistic economy. Regrettably, for numerous reasons, regime change should be ruled out as a strategic goal at this stage. Both the West and Russia are not ready for it. But there is call for innovative solutions to this quagmire, incentivizing pro-social behaviors rather than penalizing antisocial ones. Examples. Western buyers can put aside the differential between the cap on Russian oil and its market price. This fund will be released to Russia only when the war ends and the regime changes. It will be used to defray the costs of demobilization and disarmament. Unraveling the sanctions regime must be tied to a roadmap of improving behavior on the part of Russia. Sanctions must be surgically waived on opposition figures, locales and activities, and as gestures of goodwill. They also should be waived in response to acts of defiance by oligarchs and siloviki who are targeted by sanctions right now. Similarly, grace periods on sovereign debt repayments and concessions on foreign direct investment in Russia, they should comprise a carrot as at least as substantial as the sanctions stick. The conflict in Ukraine may well constitute a proxy war between West, the West and Russia, but it is also a veritable morality play, a clash of values and civilizations, and a defining moment as to the shape of things to come. A Russian meltdown is in no one's interest.